Hi guys, welcome to HD Arachnids. I'm Dave. Uh, we got Helen behind the camera over here. And this right here is Miss Fatty, my 30 year old Chilean rose hair tarantula, the Gramostola rosea or porteri. I'm pretty sure she's a porteri, but I don't know 100% positive, but she doesn't show quite as much. Don't give me a little threat pose there. Doesn't show quite as much of the red color as uh, most of the true roseas that I've seen, so I'm pretty sure she's a porteri. Uh, I bought this tarantula way back in 1994 when I was 16 years old, and I've had her ever since. Uh, she was about, I want to say, three inches diagonal leg span when I got her, roughly. So, kind of judging by how slow these guys grow, I'm betting she was at least three or four years old. And if you do the math, it's 2020 now, that puts her uh, right around 30 years old. Um, back when I bought her, you know, they. Uh, these things were just everywhere. They were being imported wild from Chile, and uh, I think she more than likely is a wild-caught specimen. Uh, they, back then, gave us horrible, horrible advice, you know, the local pet shops and all that stuff. There wasn't a whole lot of research out there. The internet wasn't real big yet like it is now. There wasn't a whole lot of uh, knowledge out there being shared like there is now, and, you know, they gave us really bad advice, like when I got her. It was a 10 gallon aquarium with a mesh lid. You know, they made you get a heat lamp and a heat rock and a heat mat. Um, they told me to keep her on aquarium gravel or wood shavings, which, you know, as we all know now, is not a good idea. And uh, of course, the uh, sponge in the water dish, that's, uh, that's another no-no. But back then, that was all common practice and accepted practice, and that's what they told you to do. And, you know, I'm amazed that she actually did survive as long as she has. You know, she's been with me through pretty much every major life event from getting married to having children and, you know, losing my house in a flood and just about uh, every aspect of a normal life you can think of. She's just sitting there in, a, in her little enclosure chilling and waiting for me to throw her a cricket. Um, these guys are super easy to take care of. You don't have to do anything real special. Um, grab the camera and you want to kind of get a little close up on the enclosure here. We'll show her how we got this set up. Uh, we don't have, you know, we got about two and a half, three inches of substrate in there. Now, normally with something like this, a terrestrial or a fossorial, you're gonna to wanna to give them a little more substrate to burrow, but in all the years I've had her, I've never known her to do any burrowing whatsoever, so I don't uh, go too crazy on the amount of substrate that she has. But we do provide her a hide and some decorations just to make it look nice and a nice little piece of wood there. And then uh, she's got this skull over here and uh, she can actually fit inside that skull too every once in a while I find her in there. And of course, a water dish that we always keep full with fresh water. Um, she does uh, definitely go on hunger strides. She's gone on probably two or three times now. She's gone about a year to a year and a half without eating. And, you know, the first time it happened, it really kind of, you know, scared the crap out of me, to be honest. I'm like, why is she not eating? And, you know, this is back when the Internet was finally starting to, to catch up a little bit. And, you know, I started researching it, and I'd read that, you know, these spiders can go on hunger strikes or they'll fast for a while. And, you know, she did. And then, then miraculously, you know, she'd either have a molt or she'd come back out and decide that she finally wanted food and she'd eat a little bit and eat real well for a few months and then go back on to the, uh, the hunger striking. Uh, just recently um, she molted about what maybe a month ago, a month and a half ago, something like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah about a month and a half ago she molted and before that it had been about five maybe even six years since her last molt and I thought that she was kind of on her last legs because she had been getting really sluggish and uh, you know, didn't want any food and didn't do any moving around and, you know, didn't really show any interest in her water dish. But uh, then one night, I, you know, a couple months ago, I looked in there and I'm like, she molted. So I'm hoping that that means that I might get, you know, another four or five, six years with her because, you know, I know it's, uh, she doesn't return the feelings, but I'm definitely very attached to this tarantula. And I, you know, I'm going to be pretty tore up when she actually does decide to pass away on us. Or not decide, but when she does pass away. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not looking forward to that, but I'm hoping that with this recent molt now, I'm going to have to not worry about that for a few years at least. I don't know if you want to grab the camera and see if you can get a close-up of her. I don't know if you can see how nice and purpley and all that the, the colors are on her. But she's got that beautiful kind of purplish, almost metallic look on her carapace there. And then uh, all the hairs and a little bit of red, you know, the red hair up here towards the, the femurs. Can you turn around? I don't know if she'll. Face the I don't know if she'll turn around for us or not. She's just gonna give us a little bit of a threat pose, I think. She's a real, really docile tarantula. I mean, I don't handle my tarantulas very often, but this is one of the ones that I will 
actually once in a great while handle because I get inevitably you know people will come over and they'll ask to see her or if they can hold them and I don't make a real big habit of letting people hold my tarantulas but I've let a few people hold this one and she is the one that uh, this and our Arizona blonde the HL Cody's are uh, the only ones that I would really let anybody besides myself handle it all but she's a beautiful spider I've had her for years you know and I just uh, Kind of wanted to share that with you guys, do something a little bit different for a video this Friday since I didn't get a whole lot of footage for feeding clips and everything. And uh, see if we can get her to come back this way here. And I know I had promised to uh, somebody that commented on one of my previous videos that we would be making an introduction video for Miss Fatty, kind of a standalone thing. So, so here we are. I guess that's about all I really had for you guys this week. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed meeting Miss Fatty here. And uh, if you like the content, if you like what we're doing, you know, obviously, please subscribe. Uh, give us some comments down below. Let us know if we're doing everything okay. What would you guys would like to see in the future? What we can do to improve a little bit? Uh, we enjoy hearing from you guys, and we will definitely, obviously, reply to any comments that you guys leave. And uh, that's uh, that's about the end of this video for this week, so we'll see you guys next Friday. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.